Uh, so first of all, thank you very much to the organizers to give me this op opportunity to uh, give this presentation about uh, recent and not so recent work uh, by myself and uh, my co-authors. So also thank you to the technical staff at CIRM. So this is a, um, not, not an easy task to organize such, a, such an online event. So I will talk about uh, generalized Julian Shapiro sequences. There are um, quite a few generalizations uh, already available. And I will add uh, a new one, which uh, I find interesting and is uh, motivated by a certain uh, property uh, about correlations. So um, yes, so the Ruin Shapiro sequence is a, a, a fairly deterministic sequence, but it has quite some interesting um, randomness properties. And I use one property, randomness, pseudo-randomness property to generalize this, this Ruin Shapiro sequence. So this um, talk is based on uh, joint work with um, Irene Markovici. Uh, so this is uh, my colleague from Nancy, from uh, so next door, basically, uh, at the Institute of Elie Carton. And our uh, uh, PhD student, uh, Pierre-Adrien Taillet, who uh, will have his PhD defense in uh, three weeks or so. And yes, so the outline is as follows of this talk. So, um, it's uh, a, fairly, a fairly long historical introduction about this uh, Rudin Shapiro sequence, and I want to give quite a few references where this Rudin Shapiro sequence appears and has been generalized and made uh, put in, um, in, in context. I will then talk about uh, small scale and large scale correlations. So, this is the property that I want to take up. So, this is a property that has been proven by Modri and Jacuzzi. In the 1998, and I give some results that I got about 10 years ago with um, Jeff Shellett and Elliot Grant, where we could uh, basically uh, generalize these results to prime alphabets. So the Houdin Shapiro sequence is a sequence on two letters, and we could generalize this property um, to recover this property for uh, for a generalization on prime and square free alphabet um, alphabets and but we uh, could not go to uh, the composite numbers and uh, this is uh, also um, the work that has been done by Pierre Adrien in his PhD thesis based on difference matrices and I will then talk about uh, these um, um, correlations on uh, these general alphabets so large scale and small scale where we can uh, get the, 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 the error term that we want, uh, but what we originally want. And I will finish with some higher dimension, um, um, higher dimension um, generalizations that have been already in some context also studied uh, um, in, in, uh, in, in uh, physics. Okay, so I start off with the original problem. So, uh, given a sequence A uh, on two symbols, and you take minus one and plus one, um, you may ask, uh, what is the size of SNA, which is the supreme norm, actually, of this uh, polynomial of degree N on the unit circle? And you might ask, what, how, how large, how small can this quantity be on uh, deterministic sequences? And, um, uh, from Parseval, you directly get that the, the quadratic norm uh, equals um, the square root, and if you take the supremal norm, you get the lower bound of square root n, and the trivial bound is uh, capital N. So the problem is how close can you get to square root of n? And um, there is a result um, which goes back to Sigmund, uh, Sigmund and uh, Salem from the from the fifties. But it proved actually that uh, for almost all A in the terms of measure, uh, you are uh, close to square root n up to a factor of square root log n. So there might be some possibility to, to get to square root n. And uh, the Rudin Shapiro sequence is one of these sequences that gets very close. So the, the problem 
is to, um, to construct a deterministic sequence that uh, has this uh, root n property. So Shapiro's approach um, was the following. He, uh, he started off with an interrelated recursion of uh, two uh, polynomial sequences, P and Q. And um, so there is a factor of Z to the 2 to the n in front of the Qs. And you may also think about the matrix that uh, is in front of this uh, PQ um, uh, vector. Um, this is the, 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 the starting point of the generalization afterwards by several people. And he could he used the parallelogram rule, so a very simple fact about these uh, complex numbers, that um, uh, getting from 2 to the n plus 1 in degree to 2 to the n, in, in, in the, the square sense, uh, you get an additional factor of two only. So by induction, you can prove that this, uh, the, the modulus of this polynomial on the unit circle is bounded by a constant standard square root, um, square root two to the n. And uh, so you, you basically uh, get the square root uh, saving basically on the, on, the, on the degree of the polynomial. Um, you can, uh, starting from this uh, construction, you can define a sequence. And this is how uh, Shapiro actually uh, started off. Uh, you can show passing from n to n plus 1. This polynomial has, um, um, has the same coefficient. So the first coefficient stay, stay, uh, stay stable and will not change. And so you can let n tend to infinity. Uh, and you get what is called um, the Rudin Shapiro sequence or the Rudin Shapiro, um, yeah, if you truncate it, the Rudin Shapiro polynomial. And um, he proved um, that this um, supremum, the supremum norm on the, of this polynomial on the unit circle is bounded by a constant times the square root of the degree of the polynomial, basically. And um, so there are uh, three names uh, related to this sequence, and maybe uh, history did not um, respect the, uh, the correct uh, way to, to name the sequence. There has been uh, one paper from uh, Maurice Collet in uh, optics and uh, spectrometry, where he already uh, used this, uh, this kind of construction. He, uh, he, uh, um, he, um, yes, he spoke about uh, these pairs of like adjacent elements. So when you look at uh, consecutive ones in a digital expansion, this is very, very close to this uh, original uh, definition of the Rudin Shapiro sequence. And um, as many of you certainly know, Shapiro um, wrote um, this thesis, and Rudin was in the jury of his thesis. And uh, they, uh, so this is how the the name uh, of the Rudin Shapiro sequence got his name. Um, uh, there are several people that uh, try to, um, to give that sequence a new name. So there is a Gole Shapiro, there is a, a Shapiro Gole, there's Gole Rudin Shapiro, but yeah. So I, I would just want to mention this uh, historical fact that maybe it's not undisputed uh, how to name the sequence. I will stick for this talk to Rudin Shapiro, but uh, still attribute, uh, yeah, give it a dimension that for a head. So um, the square root property, um, square root n property, uh, is not specific to Rudin Shapiro sequence. There are several other sequences that have this property. And um, one of these is the paper folding sequence. So this is if you take a, a sheet of paper and you fold it and you do it in an infinite way, you can uh, count the right and the left turns and you get a binary sequence and a, and a, so, so a sequence. And this also has the square root n property. There have been many, many works about uh, the square root n property and on these uh, Houdin Shapiro polynomials. I just mentioned a few. So uh, this is maybe far from being exhaustive, but uh, and I would be happy if you mentioned, give me more names, uh, related work. So uh, Alouche and Mendes France, so this is ordered by alphabet, not by year. So Alouche and Mendes France uh, 
showed uh, some bounds about an exponential sum that used this uh, Rudin Shapiro sequence. Um, Alush Liardé had a generalization of uh, Rudin Shapiro, so I will talk about this a bit later. Uh, there is a recent work by Ballister to, 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 on archive to prove this um, the best constant in front of the square root n. So we had before this 2 plus square root 2. There was a long standing question whether you can replace this by square root 6, which should be optimal. And uh, he managed to prove this, but it's uh, a very dis dis uh, uh, disputed um, history. He got it first, and Safari already had a kind of a constant here. So there are, uh, so this uh, basically the square root n uh, um, problem has been solved. I just mentioned a few other names uh, related to the work. So Prilat and uh, Morton, Prilat Kalitz, um, uh, showed. Um, some results about the summatory function of Rudin Shapiro. Wilha um, Kalitz is the first time where um, this Rudin Shapiro sequence um, um, has been uh, defined in an equivalent, equivalent way by uh, um, counting blocks of ones, consecutive ones in the binary expansion. So this is in the 70s. Uh, Dosh Habsiger. 2004 uh, provides a new method to uh, attack moments of the Rudin Shapiro polynomials. Uh, Modri and Riva showed uh, distribution results of the Rudin Shapiro sequence along primes and squares. Uh, Mendes, France, and Tenenbaum in the 80s showed a general framework where the Rudin Shapiro sequence and the paper falling sequence um, are specific uh, are particular cases. I managed to, to, to show uh, similar results so uh, for a general family. Uh, Montgomery had a, a conjecture about, um, about uh, a part. So you look at the uh, uh, sub uh, polynomial, so to say, of the Rudin Shapiro polynomial, and uh, you have some bounds. And this has conjecture has been disproved by Ballister, uh, Kefelek, Martin. Who's also here, um, uh, who got uh, a general, very general framework for this uh, substitutive uh, dynamical systems, where the Rudin Shapiro sequence is also uh, a special case. Um, uh, Rogers proved uh, recently about the distribution of the values of the Rudin Shapiro polynomial uh, accordingly. Uh, accordingly um, uh, normalized in the in the unit disk. There's an, um, uh, a recent paper, and Safari had uh, several uh, results on on the square root n on about this constant in front of the square root n property. Okay, so the recursion that you get from this um, Shapiro um, construction is very simple. So this comes directly out of this, and you can have an interpretation, which is basically goes back to the first time it appears, at, as far as I know, is uh, in Priha Kalitz, where they uh, look at this uh, Rn, Rudin Shapiro sequence, as minus one um, to the uh, count of the uh, possibly overlapping blocks, one, one, the base two expansion of n. So we already heard this by, in the talk of Michael Tromota, uh, just to mention one, um, maybe uh, one example. Uh, if you take 187 here and you expand it in base 2, and you count the number of blocks of size 2 consecutive ones, then you have here one block, there is an overlapping one, so 2, and here is 3, so you count this as 3, and you take minus 1 to the 3, and there, the value is minus 1. You can show that actually this, this is exactly what the recursion means in the base 2 expansion. So uh, what I want to talk today is about uh, this property here, which has been proven by Kesomori and Abdullah Shakruzi, according to their program to study several deterministic sequences um, in, uh, in, uh, regarding to distribution methods, um, measures. And uh, so it's, um, it was where is what's known for quite some while, and it it, it follows basically from uh, the spectral analysis of the um, 
of, of a special class of substitution dynamical systems uh, that's, that the, uh, the correlation measure of this uh, Rubin Shapiro um, uh, sequence is the, uh, is the Lebesgue measure. And so basically, you know that this uh, sum is a little o of capital N if d is fixed. What they could show is, uh, that, the, uh, is that the correlation is really, really small. So basically, these are symbols of minus one, one. You, know, there, you have lots of cancellation. The, the error term or the, the, the distance from the zero, from the mean, is uh, not square root n. It's uh, of order log n. So it's quite a natural question um, for basically how um, you can even, in their result, uh, let d grow as a function of capital N, and you still have this uh, non-correlation. In terms. So this is one of the um, uh, one of these these results. So um, what I mean by large scale correlation, your uh, the d can still be very large, and you still have a, a non correlation of these terms. So the question that we um, asked, um, we tried uh, tried to to start to deal with uh, some years ago is to find a, a, a combinatorial extension to general alphabets in order to um, re-get some kind of uh, correlation result of this power, meaning that uh, we can still have D growing as a function of capital N, but still, uh, uh, so to, to have the largest possible uh, function of uh, uh, growing uh, as capital N, but still have these non-correlation properties. So this uh, generalization, there are quite a few out there. I mentioned uh, maybe a paper by Alushan Pusquet-Melou uh, from the 90s, where they started to uh, investigate uh, the, the factor uh, complexity of these, of, of, um, of, of these um, generalizations found by mendes francin tenebon and they could show basically that uh, the factor complexity, so the number of factors of size of size L in these uh, generalizations is uh, linear, which comes out also of, uh, of a much more general fact about, about uh, automatic sequences. But they could uh, um, give an explicit value. So this is one of these combinatorial um, interpretations. Uh, Ryder had um, as far as I know, was the first to um, to look at uh, um, um, at the generalization of this uh, of this Houdin Shapiro sequence, where we replace this matrix, which is associated to these interrelated polynomial uh, recurrences, uh, by a general matrix um, related to rules of unity, and this point of view has been. Um, um, brought up by Martin Ketelek in, uh, um, in her paper and uh, also, also in the monograph. And Alouche Viardet uh, presented even uh, another generalization where you don't look at consecutive ones in the binary expansion, but you, you fix a size, let's say D, um, let's say K, and uh, you fix uh, a, a pair. A and B, and you count the number of blocks A, an arbitrary block of size K, and the B. So you're moving A, a block of size K, and B, B through the digits of the digital expansion, and you count the number of occurrences of this kind. And these are related to the chained, chained sequences and chained functions, and which gives um, even a more general context about these Arun Shapiro sequences. Which has been have been used by Modu and Triva in, in, in their paper as well. Okay, so uh, what we wanted actually to do is um, to find some results about how often we can avoid equal terms. So this uh, is a very general definition. Um, we say that um, we have an an infinite sequence over a K term alphabet, and we fix an integral vector, so with, um, with n components, and um, 
we run with this fixed interval vector uh, through the digits or through through the sequence, and uh, we we uh, we give give it a value zero if um, if we see the same symbol at each entry, and we say one otherwise. So this is some kind of saying that. Uh, um, the, 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 the members or the elements of the sequence are highly non-correlated or are not, are not correlated if uh, at least one of these elements is uh, not is different from the others. And uh, so, in 2009, um, we could show that uh, it's not possible to get better than a random sequence in terms of this correlation. Uh, which is not very surprising, but uh, it took a, a bit of a combinatorial uh, inclusion-exclusion uh, argument to get there. So, uh, if you fix a D and let N run to infinity, and you want to maximize this quantity, maximizing means that uh, two terms should be different, then you cannot do better for all of the Ds, which means that the lim inf, if D grows to infinity uh, would be small in terms. And uh, the surprising part is that for Rudin Shapiro, basically you hit the bound. You can, you can actually get exactly to the bound. And um, one uh, application was basically, uh, one motivation was to construct uh, a, 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 some kind of um, sequences on a k array alphabet that hit this bound. And these are, are, were our generalization of the Rubin Shapiro sequence. Um, I just mentioned one related result in that context. So if you look, if you fix a D to a, uh, a vector of M components and you run again through uh, your sequence, then you cannot always do um, uh, uh, better than the random random case in terms uh, if the D the norm of the D uh, grows then uh, um, the, this lim this limit uh, is, is small and in that case uh, Houdin Shapiro is uh, not optimal if M is larger than 2 so it has been shown by Modui and uh, Charcuzy that if you take four terms in Houdin Shapiro then four terms in Houdin Shapiro are highly correlated so basically, it's not possible to get this little O of capital M uh, if you choose your uh, D, your, uh, your window, or your distances between the terms uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, uh, in an according way. So what was our, de our definition? And I, I will then uh, give a general context via different matrices. Uh, what we need actually to prove um, these uh, non-correlation estimates, we use exponential sums, we used exponential sums, and uh, you know, in doing so, we needed, in fact, a function f that, uh, if you look at the differences and reduce modulo k, uh, permutes all of the elements of the alphabet, so 0 up to k minus 1. And uh, this function is periodic, and um, there are several um, uh, examples that uh, give uh, some generalizations that we that I mentioned before that can be uh, coded by a correct or an appropriate uh, choice of this function f. And uh, a generalized Rune Shapiro sequences is is there is then a function where you have this kind of uh, of um, recurrence relation. So what you do is you take uh, an entry, so you write it in base k, you split off the, la the, the last digit, which I, uh, I call j, and then I have n k plus j, and uh, the Rudin Shapiro, the, the, the count is the count of n plus the function that takes into consideration just the, la the last digit and the n that is in front with a fixed uh, f, and f is a function that is uh, periodic in the second variable. So this generalizes um, 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 the, a, a class of, um, of generalized 
generalized Turin Shapiro sequences that has been uh, suggested, proposed by Martin Kefelek, where you replace in the original Rudin Shapiro sequence the minus one by uh, uh, by a uh, case root of unity, and in the exponent you add the product of consecutive uh, digits. And in the case when k is prime, you can prove that this function, these differences, uh, permute in the correct way and uh, give therefore rise to a uh, generalized Rudin Shapiro sequence in our sense. Uh, in the specific case when k equals 2, um, uh, we get this uh, generalized, um, the, the, the original Goulet Houdin Shapiro sequence of the alphabet 0, 1. There are some quite interesting um, other examples I just mentioned here. You can count other blocks of size 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, etc. With, um, with this effect of this definition. Okay, one other, when you uh, count you give the total count of the number of subblocks 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2 in the ternary expansion of integers. So what are the result that we got? Uh, we could generalize this uh, uh, result by uh, Moudoui and Charcuzy um, directly when k is prime with the help of this definition. Uh, we still get if the um, the distance of the two elements, so let's say that D1 is less than D2, if this distance is a little of capital N, we still get an asymptotic formula, and the error term is very, very small. And uh, we tried to use this uh, construction to glue various primes together to get at least to k square free. And this was actually the extension that we proposed at that, uh, that stage. Um, we use several generalized uh, Rudin Shapiro sequences and use some kind of a contour uh, numeration construction to glue them together and uh, to, uh, to define uh, a generalized Rudin Shapiro sequence to K to, uh, over an alphabet which is uh, square free. And we got a result of that type where uh, the, we still get the correct main term, um, but the error term is, well, is, is, is worse. And this comes of the fact that we use a, a, a procedure outlined to, or used by King about the sum of digits in different bases. And we have to take into consideration some carry propagation and we have to cut it down and we lose quite, quite some bit there. So, but we had no idea how to get to, uh, to, um, to composite, uh, composite um, values of K. How to, what is the correct combinatorial interpretation or via recursions to get to this uh, non-square three things? So uh, this is where the differences matrices come in. And this is a concept that we found out and was uh, also worked out by uh, Pierre Adrien. This is a thesis. Um, you take uh, an alphabet uh, of size k. So there is no arithmetic condition on k now. G should be a finite abelian group. This could be the residues module k, but there are other possibilities as well. And then uh, there's a notion that is called um, a block additive function. This is very well known, goes back to at least uh, Emmanuel Kickland, uh, who called this digital uh, functions. So what, is th what it does is uh, you run, you write n in uh, base k, you take consecutive integers and then uh, for, for, for each pair of digits, you give, give it a weight. And you have, therefore, a weight function. Of course, if you take uh, Houdin Shapiro is block additive, uh, if the function f um, gives a 1, if you have 1, 1, and in other, other cases it gives uh, 0 as a value. Block additive functions are automatic sequences, uh, are k-automatic. Uh, Houdin Shapiro is one of them. So what is interesting about these block additive functions 
what we needed actually in our proofs is that we uh, need that everything, uh, that we get the whole permutation of our uh, original alphabet. And uh, if you take here a, a group G and we fix an element, little g, um, then what we want is for, for each i and j that we fix, and if we, if we run through the whole alphabet, all of the differences should be taken the same number of times. So this should be independent of the g. So in, in other terms, we need equidistribution in some sense, in terms of differences uh, on the group. And this uh, can be uh, written in the sense of uh, differences, difference matrices, matrices. A uh, difference matrix is a matrix um, of, of, uh, of R rows and C columns. When you take any choice of two rows and you do the differences of these two rows, then you hit every element of the group just the same uh, number of times. So give maybe a couple of uh, um, examples. So here, this is the original Rudin Shapiro sequence. If you look at the second uh, row and you subtract the first row, then of course you get the zero here and the one here, so which is the whole Z2, so the residues modulo two. Uh, if you take the, um, uh, this one, for instance, and um, you take, the third line, third row, and you subtract the second row, you get a zero, you get a one, you get a minus one, which is a two, modulo three. And so you hit all of the terms of the group. And this can, can be proven also that this is the case here, and also here. And this is, goes back to this uh, construction that we had before for primes. This is a, a highly non-trivial um, uh, area. And uh, maybe these difference matrices are not that known, not that well known, but they are quite related to these Hadamard matrices. And Hadamard matrix, matrix is a square matrix where you basically put uh, ask for um, all of the rows uh, should be uh, orthogonal one to the, to, 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 to the other. So any, for any choice of two rows, uh, you have an orthogonality relation and uh, the, all of the entries are just plus ones and minus ones. And these Hadamard matrices, there is a, a conjecture about the existence of Hadamard matrices um, going back to, to 1893 to Hadamard, who asked whether it is possible, um, whether does there exist for any uh, multiple of four as a dimension of the matrix, uh, does there exist a Hadamard matrix? And this is still open. And uh, for instance, uh, the last um, result in that perspective is a couple of years ago. And, and the best result known is now that uh, up to 664, there is always a Hadamard matrix. But there's nobody knows whether there exists a Hadamard matrix of size 668. So this is still open. And um, yeah. Uh, you can show that difference matrices and Hadamard matrices are uh, somehow related. Basically, you can show that the Hadamard matrix of size n exists if and only if uh, there exists a matrix, a, a difference matrix of size n over the group Z, uh, Z2, so uh, over 0, 1. This is basically uh, equivalent. So, is just to, to mention that this is a, a quite a, a difficult uh, a problem uh, in combinatorial designs. And uh, maybe the first paper goes back to Jungnickel, his, who studied this um, several cases. Um, the most comprehensive monograph about this kind of combinatorial matrices is maybe Hidayat, Sloan, and Stufken about orthogonal arrays. And there is still quite ongoing work about the classification of these difference matrices. Uh, for instance, the PhD thesis of Lampio from, from Helsinki uh, a couple of years ago, where he tried actually to, to, to give a uh, computational approach also to, to calculate or to, to, to find all of the difference, difference matrices 
uh, possible of a fixed dimension. And I'll just mention maybe uh, here two. Um, yeah, you can show that for certain um, integers, uh, the set of all different matrices is empty. And basically, this was the fact that we could not uh, find to, to, to get it to dimension four. Four is composite. And, but if there exists, if you change, um, if, um, if you change the, uh, if you change the underlying group, uh, the, there exists a difference matrix. So, um, uh, Hedayat and uh, yeah, basically there there exists this uh, this uh, difference matrices whenever you you find a, a good group. Okay. Um, okay. So um, uh, there is a result that appears in that book. Uh, of Hedayat about these uh, orthogonal uh, arrays, which goes um, the way that um, whenever your uh, dimension of the matrix is a power of a prime, then there exists uh, an abelian group such that the set is non-empty. So you can give uh, basically a difference matrix whenever the size of the, the, the matrix is a power of a prime. The construction uses uh, finite fields. Uh, basically, what you do is you write down uh, your large uh, polynomial, you cut it down somewhere, and uh, you use the multiplication, uh, multiplication table of the large field uh, to, uh, to uh, construct this table with uh, embedding. So this is uh, a construction, but maybe here's an example. Uh, for D99, so South 99 of the group Z3, there uh, are two different classes, so there are completely different um, um, types of difference matrices. Um, so the equivalence class, I won't go into detail. Equivalence class means that you can uh, normalize in some sense your matrix that uh, they are ordered in rows and columns lexicographically. And uh, it's quite strange that uh, you can change a, a little corner inside this, uh, this matrix, and matrix and you still get a difference matrix. And um, so Lampio did quite, quite a few, uh, um, some, a few, few, quite a few uh, calculations about uh, these classes. And here I just mention maybe another one where you see that the first five, five rows stay the same. And uh, here the next four are completely different from the, from, the, from the first class. And you could show that here there are five equivalence classes of these matrices. Okay, so um, I mentioned quite rapidly the result by Pierre Adrian that he had. He used these uh, difference matrices to get the Moudry Charcuzy uh, correlation result. Um, uh, when the, um, the size of the matrix is a power of a prime, where we know that there is a difference matrix. And so um, this solves actually the problem of, of, the, of the size four alphabet where he needed actually to change the group, the underlying group, and uh, therefore could construct um, a Rudin Shapiro sequence on the, on, the, on the alphabet 0, 1, 2, 3, so on, on, on really four letters, where all of the four letters are used to get this uh, correlation result. And with uh, gluing together, uh, he could uh, go up to composite uh, alphabet size and um, losing again in the error term by a procedure that is known uh, by Kim. Okay, so the question that we asked in, and I, maybe in the last minutes I would 
will show us six minutes. I will show how to, uh, what was our motivation. Uh, let if you fix D, is it possible basically to show that for any kind of generalized Rudin Shapiro sequences, sequence that is based on all this difference matrix, we get as good as in the original case, which means that uh, the error term is of, a, of the size of log n. And um, yeah, so the question was then, or is still ongoing, we, are, we do not know whether it's possible to d let d, let d grow as a function of capital N to still get this one. But this was already the challenge to, uh, to, 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 to find the conditions on our, um, uh, whether are there any conditions on this, uh, this function to get this bound. And uh, so what this generalizes this, uh, this uh, discrete correlation coefficient that I gave before, um, because this, uh, this coefficient only takes care whether symbols are equal or not. Here we fix i and j and we look how often we hit i and j, basically asymptotic in an asymptotic sense. And uh, if you look here at the general Swin Shapiro with p equals three that we have, um, and you run basically through, um, through the sequence with a distance of one, two, three, four symbols, you get a zero, one, etc., and you might see that, uh, yeah, all all of these couples, all of these pairs uh, appear, and uh, in the correct way with a very small error term. This is what we got empirically, and this happens uh, for any choice of the uh, underlying difference matrix. Maybe I go a bit further. Okay, so the, uh, uh, the, we got that result. Uh, just mention quickly how, um, what was the proof idea. Um, what we actually need is to study uh, differences in these uh, block additive functions on, based on these digital expansions. And what we do is we write n and n plus d in base k, so from left to right in the unusual way. So this is on the low, the low, uh, lowest significant digits and going up to the high, highest uh, significant digits. And uh, we stop at the, um, the CN is the digit, the last digit uh, where uh, these expansions differ. So meaning that from starting from here, there is no carry that goes uh, over to the largest digits. And to define uh, some kind of a fiber, a fiber of n. And uh, this fiber uh, takes care of the digit that is uh, next to uh, this uh, cn, in the index cn. And uh, what we do next is to decompose our interval um, so our, uh, we look first of these elements of the fiber and uh, let I, uh, uh, so we take N, we look at the digital expansion and we put an I on the, on the higher placed uh, digit next to the last digit that is affected by the addition of D. And uh, when you now go to this uh, generalized Rudin Shapiro sequence based on this uh, block additive function, uh, then we can write it like this, where C1 is a function that uh, only lives on the lower place digits, and C2 is a function or a constant in that case that lives on the lower place digits. When you now go to the difference, and this is exactly what we want first in the first uh, step. Then we get a constant here, and the upper part just uh, goes away because, because the x is not affected by the addition of the addition of the of n. And what we now do is we let i uh, change run from zero up to k minus one to the whole alphabet, and so this difference will uh, run through all of the group elements. And basically, our conditions imposes that we run in the, in the correct way. We hit every group element in the in the same 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 way, 
and we uh, we get the result that in a fiber we have u n plus d equals u n plus g uh, equally often whenever we fixed a g in the group. So what we need is that the difference of the function um, uh, hits this uh, in, uh, uh, in the correct way. And I skip the proof, which is maybe is then just to decompose your large interval with capital N into fibers. You count the number of fibers that you need to um, uh, yeah, you, you, you eat up in some sense all of the integers, integers zero up to capital N and uh, then you get a lower bound so you get the sum of digits that will appear naturally in some way and you get the lower bound and the error term is of the size log N but in the mean if you add this over the group of course you get capital N so which means uh, this difference between the mean for a little g and the mean value over the cardinality of the group, this uh, distance cannot be too large. What we get is actually then, in that case, we exactly get the log n. Yes, so this was our result. Um, and we can use some probabilistic techniques in order to show uh, the, the, well, what we had before, so if you fix i and j and uh, look at the what is the limit, so how often you get i and j whenever u n is uh, generalized through the Shapiro sequence, um, yes, then, then uh, yes, we we basically uh, we, we 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 then get the result that we wanted, and there are some higher dimension uh, analogs that I just give a few pictures you can uh, use this um, setting combinatorial setting i would say to generate uh, um, um, higher um, um, uh, rudin shapiro sequences that live on a d-dimensional t-dimensional um, space and um, so what this means is if you fix a little square and you fix a vector d and you let this square grow and you compare the square with the uh, with the shifted square and you look at the mean value of the differences that uh, the different terms that are in the squares then you still recover this uh, log n term and uh, depending on the setting, depending on the difference matrix that, that is uh, uh, basically uh, un un underlying the underlying concept, you can have uh, quite nice pictures. So this is Rudin Shapiro uh, vertically, Rudin Shapiro horizontally, and you get uh, the sum of the two Rudin Shapiros in modulo two. Uh, you still get this log n behavior, and uh, yes, so quite pseudo random random pictures in the end so i would like to stop here and thank you very much for your attention <laughs>